on the arts, because art brings people together, as we see here right now, we are together. So as we wait for this crowd that is coming, let's talk about poetry and what it means to be a poet, how important poetry is to a society, and what it does as an art form in inspiring and galvanizing the people, right? So every Thursday, we have this poetry workshop next door or, or across the street. Across the, what's across the street? What building is across the street? The theater. The theater, yes. You cannot forget about the theater. As it, as it happens, as we come in the heart of East Cleveland, these are pillars in the neighborhood that is based on, I feel, an intellectual tradition. To be an artist, we have to be intellectuals. We have to be able to criti critically analyze the society, critically analyze the society based on our experience, our, your, your experience, Brother Stein's experience. It's the same experience, but we have different interpretations. So let's try to figure out because there's so much going on in the world. And as I said, I don't know, for the newcomers, poetry is less popular than knitting. I don't know how to knit. <laughs> I'm a poet. <laughs> so what we're going to do, I don't know, does everybody have a like, pen and paper, something to write with? Everybody can yes. record on their phones. Everybody can, <laughs> we can type it in, or we can do it like this. This is a, an organic situation. So we're going to write two lines of poetry a piece. Two lines. That is a couplet. We're going to write a couplet about why poetry is important to us. As we wait for 100 people to come in in the next 15 minutes so we can start this slam. Poetry. Why does poetry, how does poetry, this is the prime yeah. How does poetry save lives? Because that's what Rayshawn believed in. Rayshawn D. Armstrong murdered yesterday, April 24th, 2014, a year ago. 2014, by a 15-year-old. He was 25. There was a mistake in the identity of a car. The 15-year-old didn't know the difference between midnight blue and black. That is what killed Rayshawn E. Armstrong. He shot into the car that he thought was black and killed Rayshawn E. Armstrong. He was shot in the medulla oblongata. 15 years old. This is what I've been dealing with for the last year as a poet. So I've been writing about a lot about you know, gun violence and you know, violence by crime. But Tamir Rice was shot twice in the stomach by our police officers. Tanisha Anderson was slammed on her head and died. Like, so there's so many different situations. Baltimore, they're doing something in Baltimore. I don't even know the guy's name. I should know. But someone died in police custody in Baltimore. What's that? Gray. Yeah, Gray. Yeah, last name. So Oklahoma City, Tulsa, I watched a police officer chase somebody down the street, and I don't know if anybody said he shot him in the back. Shot him in the back, it was a reservist who was paid to be a police officer, and the guy with the body cameras, they crushed his head, they crushed his skull with his knee, crushed his, for him to stop talking. It was the body camera. They was chasing him. It was like watching him. It was like playing a video game. He was chasing him. Chasing him. Jumped on him. He's wrestling down. You hear the gunshot. The guy dropped the gun. You hear the gun drop. And the guy was like, he shot me in my back. He shot me. And the police officer crushed. He put his knee in his throat or on his head or something like that. Yeah. Tulsa, Tulsa Oklahoma. And it's on video. But he was selling. He was selling guns illegally. So they was, it was like an undercover type of situation. 
So let's do it like this. Two, two lines about why poetry saves lives. I'm going to start it out. Yeah. Life. Yeah, right, right. You Art can say it, say it, but write it down. Art in the eyes. Life in the eyes of artists. I ain't saying we're the smartest, but the blessing is evident. Use for its true intent. So we might as well just go ahead. You don't even have to write it. <laughs> if, you, if you can say it, if you want to say it, or if you want to write it on your own, we can share. We can share. Yeah. So um, if anybody has any poetry that they like to share, we can do that also as we think about why poetry saves lives. So I think, how many of us in here are poets? I know Pete Grill's a poet. Excuse me, ma'am. What is it? A poet, my name is Estelle. Estelle, OK. I know Brother Sky is a poet. Man, he just come back from the city. He's a legend. Yes, you are, sir. Yes. How you doing, ma'am? Michelle. Michelle, are you a poet? You're a visitor? Who's your favorite poet? These young brothers back here, unanimously said Mike's and Hughes. I think the first one said it, but the second one just said it because he heard him say it. <laughs> Mike's and Hughes, how you doing? Sister Free? Poet? I know you're a poet, yes. Sister Asia? Yes, yes. Poet. Poet. Yeah, heavy hitters. Brother Sincere? Poet? Yes. Ma'am? Not a poet? So who is your favorite poet then? I can't say. I can't say right So do you like knitting? I don't know Okay. So we got poets. We got poets every Thursday across the street. How about this young brother? Poet. Poet. Who's your favorite poet? Um, probably Mike Sahib. Mike Sahib is dope. Yeah. yeah. Central. He was in the hood. When, before it was the hood. Central. Yes, young lady. Shayla, poet? Yes. <laughs> Who is your favorite poet? My idol. Yeah. Rest in peace. She died last year. Mm -hmm. With Amiri Baraka. With Rayshawn D. Armstrong, which is so, so important. Rayshawn D. Armstrong died last year. Elder? My favorite poets are Thanks and Hughes. Yes. Amiri Baraka. Yes. Quincy We had him here October 10th. Yes. Yes. Alan Shiva. How about you young guys? Who's your favorite poet? Two Chains? <laughs> Two Chains is a poet. How about, I don't know, who? Gucci Mane? Kendrick Lamar. Kendrick Lamar. I'm telling you, when you write it down, it is poetry. When you write it down, it's poetry. Who's, who is your favorite poet? Pac got some poetry. He got a book of poetry. Right. Well, I'm going to with Tom Free. Harris One. Harris One. I've been listening to Kendrick Lamar. Kendrick Lamar is dope. Harris One. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How about you, sir? Poet. Poet. Edgar Allan Poe. Whoa. Hey. Whoa. Hey. Whoa. Yeah. <laughs> Edgar <laughs> Allan Poe. Right. Right. He was a short, he wrote short right. stories, too. Raven. I read something where the lady had, at the end of the story, he had teeth in, in a matchbox or something. And they would just, he would rattle it or something like that. I forget the name. I'm sorry I forget the name of it. But hey, you're out of the Devon. Let's come on in. So we're just going to start. We're going to do it. We're going to do a workshop, and then we're going to get into an open mic. And a slam. We're, we're going to will at least 25 more people to come in this room, and when we get it going, it's going to be awesome. All right? So, who's your favorite poet? One of the persons that I did from was James. Uh, did, what's the name of the author? 
James Baldwin. Yeah. Yeah. James Baldwin. Cleveland Heights Poetry Club. I see him every Friday. Yeah. Every Friday. So come on in. So we're writing about why poetry say how why does poetry save lives? How can poetry save lives? And we have an open mic list. We're gonna get it going regardless. Um, we have an open mic list. It's an intimate space. We know everybody knows each other's name. What's your name, young man? Justice. Justice? Justice. He, he knew ladies and you. What about you? Devontae. How about you, sir? Mark. Mark, okay. So, um, who wants to do? Does anybody have anything to share? Yes. We have the elder. Do you want to get on stage or do you want to stand where you are? Yeah, we don't need the stage. We can use it, but we don't need it. In here. It's kind of abstract, but A brave and gracious heart fell deep into dark, into its ending. The darkness reached for light, but as it was, the light did burn. Held the power of darkness boldly, unrepenting. Every word then spoken seemed such spoken out of turn. Taken by one's own delight and ego, born, not earned. The mystic with magical mastery about each stone to heat. For darkness did not search and weary, rather search and stern. And light manifest to keys, locks, still darkness, darkness did not heed. A place to take refuge, a place in which to plead, a place to belong to, a place to feel right again. Even though its outer glow may burn others as it seems, what seems strange is light burns dark even without the man. So come, the faithful, ignorant, come all, rejoice and grant. Darkness is evil and light is good. But light has not hand. Yeah. <clears throat> I sound like you're Edgar Allan Poe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. Like, yeah. Ish. Ish, right. Ish. right. Yeah. It did sound like Oh, all right, all right. 
Come on in. We got two. See your palm brought. Two people. We need 25 people to come in here go. and we can get it going. Hey, Ms. Ms. Ruth. And Charmaine. Yeah. So, uh, who else got some poetry? I got one for you. Okay. Uh, America, America, God shed his grace on thee. America, one hell of a place. Yet they ask God to shed upon them his heavenly grace. They kill people, they steal people, other countries, they they waste, they come from evil, they breed evil, they are evil. The time has come again for them to let my people go. Free the people's minds from your lies and wicked fairy tales. Tell the truth about your roots so I can understand why it is I do what I do. I am a product of your environment, your culture. You are the reason I chase my sisters, your material trinkets like a vulture. That's how an American lives. Love wax cold, hate created over the years. Talk to love the lies and hate the truth. Talk to hate and despise me and I look just like you. Talk to put on a mask of disguise. Don't let your real feelings show through. America was built on lies and that's all. December 31st, 
or bleached white paint. And since anything red was rare, instead, they had no choice but to use slow roasted oven prepared Passover lamb chop juice. And even lamb's blood was scarce. And reserved only for the privileged who witnessed, experienced, or have purchased a patriotic product past 9-11 for at least $9.99 and nine colors easily mounted, readily visible, and nine lovely fragrances of an American catastrophe. While tanks are rolling through Bethlehem, where patriotism has cost lives with no time left to pray, much less count on faster service using a major credit card. Meanwhile, we the Americans, the group home of the brave, Yet still, media slaves continue to be lulled into a silent lunacy and indifference to violence until it's our child getting fed multi-iron vitamins from an automatic at recess, much less the idea of co-workers bringing fertilizer to work. Or better yet, imagine trying to identify body fragments, car keys, trinkets beneath glass, metal, and brick, because what we gave is what we get. The chickens now no longer chicks and have come home to roost with no more gold from the goose because planes took out the coops and our troops find us up at the airport. And regardless of our travel destination, we still arrive in a state of martial law. While Uncle Sam hides behind dense bushes eating pretzels in front of White House defense monitors, marveling at his wife's marking innocence destroyed, yet still more fence weapons get deployed for only one man, Senator Gore ignored when North gave fair warning over 15 years before. So now Rudy and George have formed campaigns against terror, is both the hero and bearer of bad views. While trading cloaks for capes, Lady Justice still gets raped. Acquitting killer cops hasn't stopped. And me is still raped. Mm -hmm. Anyway, let me say that. Acquitting killer cops hasn't stopped. And Mumia still waits, snakes in a rat race. My apple pie now has a foul taste. We had no business selling weapons to the East in the first place. So now, where are all our heroes in this age of mass hysteria? Why do we have to wait till now to ask God to bless America? Yeah. 
I mean, I don't know. Well, we need a new. How y'all feel? Can we pull the slam off with just us? I'm feeling the energy now. We can. can we pull a slam off? But we can do the open mic. Everybody get books, designs. Copy Ray Sean's book. Copy of my book. Copy of Zion. Everybody. But don't. Ain't nobody getting a note, a moleskin notebook, nor a cash prize. That is. That is what's going on in terms of the, the prize for the slam. We have a. Seventy-five, fifty, and twenty-five dollar cash prize. Most can notebooks. Most can notebooks are dope. <laughs> a copy of my first chat book. A copy of a Zion that I just wrote and Rayshawn's book. I was able to get. So let me say, talk about Rayshawn real quick as we go. Well, go ahead. Do your poem. Go ahead. Sure. Judges, Sister Asia, Brother Sky, Elder, would you be willing to be a judge? You. <laughs> <laughs> yes. No, actually, I'm very much late. I have another place. I got to make Oh, okay. <laughs> Yeah, you can do open mic. We gotta, Miss Ruth, would you love to be a judge? I'm listening, right? No? Anyone can judge, it's not hard. Well, I'm a, are you slamming? No, okay, okay, all right. Anita, yep. favorite poet? I'm Amiri Baraka. Amiri Baraka. Somebody blew up America. <laughs> Somebody blew up America. Who? That's, a, that's the name of Paul. They took, they took his, he was a poet laureate. Uh, so poet laureates, they get paid $10,000 a year to read poetry for the state and represent the state. New Jersey, they wanted to take that from him. Somebody blew up America. Because some, they said it was anti-Semitic. Because he said something about... Uh, the Israelis didn't, they, they knew about it, they didn't show up to work that day or something like that. Yeah, look it up. Somebody blew up America. He went in on Connie Chung. <laughs> was we there? Who was out there at the workshop? I was so good at, at the workshop when we talked about Amir Baraka. We talked about Amir Baraka on YouTube. It's an interview with Amir Baraka talking to Connie Chung. She was asking him about Barack Obama. You can't say that kind of stuff. He went in as a poet. <laughs> yeah, very rock. Show. I had a chance to perform, right? Like, follow him up one time. Yeah. yeah. Mary Baraka. That was like, wow. <laughs> yeah. Open mic? Yeah. Come on with it. Um, can you stand up? So yeah. I'll, should we get on the stage yes. now? Yes. Yeah, let's get on the stage. Yeah, let's start getting on the stage. <laughs> Yeah, 
Here's a ticket for him.